Hello and welcome to our daily Zoom cast. This is Paul Hoyt, the CEO of Ascending Harvest, coming to you with my best buddy business partner, resident inventor genius, Shane McKenna. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the crowdfunding campaign that we have going on right now for the Ascending, Har Ascending Harvest systems. And we're going to talk about one of Shane's, I, I, I thought it was one of his favorite sayings, but he tells me that it is his mantra his golden mantra, and that is abundance flows to value. I can't wait to hear what he has to say about that. Say hello to the friends, Shane. Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be talking about my personal mantra, and I'll share the history of how that became my mantra. But, uh, yes, abundance flows to value. It's a universal law. It's an immutable law. And so we'll talk about that a little bit, and we'll talk about what that means and what it means in terms of ascending harvest and what we're doing here. Cool. But first, we are in the middle of a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. Thank you so much to everybody who has contributed so far. I think we're up to close to 100 donors or so, which is wonderful. 105. 105. Awesome. Awesome. I get the privilege of reaching out to each and every person who contributes and sending them a message of gratitude and giving them a, a link where they can download some free things that come with each contribution. Uh, so I get to see that every once in a while, and I know my list is growing and growing. So thank you very much. For those of you who do contribute, you get added into a prize drawing that we do at the end of every single one of these Zoom casts. You can also get entered in without contributing. Uh, by going to ascendingharvest.com and just giving us your email address. But what the heck, you know, it only costs a buck or five or ten or twenty, and we really could use your contributions to the campaign. We're almost halfway through with the initial 30 days of the campaign. We're not quite to the halfway of our goal, so we are boosting it in any way that we possibly can. If you are a person who has contributed, you have a big list or have a large social media presence, please let us know. We would really appreciate your support, and we can mm -hmm. honor you and reward you in ways with special links and ways to track the contributions that come through your outreach, which we would dearly love to do. So if you have contributed, if you'd like to be a friend of this campaign, help us reach our goal. We've got a little over two weeks left, and we are bound and determined to reach our goal of $27,500 you know, in the first 30 days of this campaign. Thanks in advance for your continued support. And thank you for your support so far. We really do appreciate it. Yes, um, thank you very much. With that, I'm eager to hear what Shane has to say about abundance flows to value. I remember when he first told me that a few months ago, and I guess I didn't understand at that point in time that that was his golden mantra that, he re that he's had for a number of years. So, Shane, I'm really interested in what does the phrase abundance flows to value means to you, and how did you come up with that insight in the first place? Great question. So let me first start with how I came up with it. Um, a good friend of mine, Chris Ruddy, he is a world-famous surfboard shaper, and he has been written up in, in every surfer magazine in the world, and he's built a lot of uh, surfboards for pro surfers, and he has a um, um, Chris Ruddy Surfboards is his brand, and uh, he used to own uh, ukulele brand surfboards, and anyway, um, he's a creative guy. Uh, he used to come over to my shop every once in a while, and we'd hang out. Uh, I think he liked seeing the creative things that I did in my shop, and we were talking about this idea of how to attract more abundance. And he just used the simple phrase, <laughs> abundance flows to value. And um, that just stuck because whether you're talking about um, bacteria or you're talking about how the universe works, if there is a value um, then abundance flows to it. And another way to look at that is anything you find in abundance, if you examine the system that that thing is existing in, then you will find, you'll find value. So, for example, Walmart is a hugely successful company. 
It's not because they have the lowest prices. It's not because they have the most amazing employees. It's not because they have a fabulous building. The reason that they're so successful and why there's so much abundance wrapped around Walmart is they invented an extremely efficient logistics system that allowed them to, when you're scanning your item at the cash register that says that's sold, they invented the system. I think they invented it. If they didn't invent it, they perfected it. They perfected the system that alerts that all the way back to the suppliers of the manufacturers that make that part or that, that product. So that everybody in the logistics chain, everybody in the chain of custody that that product has to pass through is alerted of an upcoming order. And so it, it, it tabulates all of those orders across the com company and automatically alerts everybody in the supply chain and all the logistical chain that there's a, that there's a need for materials and products and so on and so forth. And it allows them to get products on the shelf economically and quickly and easily and efficiently. And that value allows them to give just a little bit better price. And because of that better price, a lot of people flock in. And because what they expect to be on the shelves is always on the shelves, that's the beauty of their system. And so people rely on Walmart heavily. And so anything you want to examine, it could be your relationship, it could be your spiritual center, it could be your health. Anything that you have in abundance if you, if you analyze it, you will find some value there that that abundance is surrounding. If you have big biceps, the value is, is you probably did a bunch of curls and exercises that built your <laughs> biceps. <laughs> You've been looking at my, my guns, haven't you? That's it. That's yeah, it, Paul. I right. want to use you in an, in an object example here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right oh i i love i love the phrase abundance grows to value because it's my pleasure and privilege to give presentations periodically on basic fundamentals in business in fact last night i just gave a hour long presentation on fundamentals in marketing to another team that i am advising um and we talked a lot about value propositions so when we translate the phrase abundance flows to value into marketing language the, the language that marketeers use is a value proposition, which is, you know, what is your statement of the value that you're bringing to your clients or could possibly bring to your clients and prospects? You know, what is your proposal to them about the value that they might receive from engaging in a transaction with your business? In sales, we teach people who are, who are just learning how to sell that the number one thing that you want to do is understand what your prospect values about your product. You know, if you're selling shoes, you want to somehow find the question, of, get the answer to the question about you know, what kind of shoes are you looking for today? What, 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 do you, what, do you, what really floats your boat? What really causes you to zing? What would you really like to see in a pair of shoes? So you understand what they value so that you can take your product or service or experience and connect it to the value that you have discovered in their minds. You don't want them to have to do the connection, although that's kind of handy. But as a salesperson, your, your responsibility, your opportunity is to help them make that connection. The connection in between the value that they want and the product or service that you have. Now, Shane, you've got a lot of examples of abundance flowing to value in your life in past businesses you were a, a premium artist, a very high quality and in incredible demand artist for the work that you did with wood, I believe, and the value. Yes. So talk about abundance flowing to value in the context of that business. So in the niche of the art world that I occupied, I set, I set the very intentional goal that I was going to build the world's most expensive furniture. And I didn't do that because I wanted to make a lot of money. I did that because 
I wanted to work at a level of craftsmanship that standard pricing would not allow. So I wanted to work at a level of creativity and craftsmanship and originality that only very, very high dollars could fund. So I set, I set the intention of creating the world's most expensive furniture. And in my niche, I was easily in that category of the most expensive in the world. And so some of the things that I did in order to create value in that space is the level of customization and the level of quality was on the very extreme. So every piece of furniture was designed to that client and we never built the same piece of furniture twice. Hmm. So I never made chairs because you had to make more than two of the same thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the point is, is that by giving people a certain level of quality and customization, really what we were giving them was their own unique story yeah. to tell. And that's really what the value we were bringing. And so it was easy to draw abundance to that because where do you go? I mean, where can you go to, to have a piece of furniture tell a story for you? You could maybe find an antique piece of furniture, which is why antiques have a lot of value because they're very unique. And the circumstance that they're found in is a unique circumstance. So that's a unique story. But by crafting a piece of furniture that met somebody's personal interest, that, that reflected who they are, that reflected their interest and their desires and fit their home, that, that looked like it was designed as part of their home or, or that the theme of it uh, transported them to a different place, a desired place. To be able to tell that kind of story is so unique that it attracts people that have a lot of money and are willing to pay a lot of money in order to be able to have that story, to share that story um, with themselves and with their guests. That's awesome, Shane. I don't think I've heard you say that before because I'm, I'm getting all kinds of bells going off in the back of my head about value propositions. You know, typically we talk about value propositions in terms of the products and services that we sell. But, you know, when Zappos came out and with Tony Shea's book on delivering happiness, he really introduced a third type of value that we bring to clients, and that is the value of an experience, the experience of going to a party, the experience of interacting with a customer service representative, the experience of going to Disneyland, of watching a football game. You know, when people buy those things, they're not buying really products, I mean, you could call it a product, but it's not like a physical, tangible product like a chair that you can pick up or sit on. You know, it's not a service. I'm not like mowing your lawn or raking your leaves or fixing your roof. You know, it's an experience. It's something that they can, they can enjoy in the moment of life. And now you're talking about a fourth one, which is a story. You're giving them a story that they can tell to somebody else, which I think is just absolutely awesome. I love that. So I'm going to change all of my pitches now when I talk about marketing <laughs> fundamentals and sales fundamentals and get people to look for products, services, experiences, and stories. That's awesome. So you, we knew that we were in the right space and that we had nailed it when our customers, when we're there, we're still doing the installation, we're buttoning things up and dusting things off and getting everything, you know, very presentable for them at, you know, all in place and everything. Mm -hmm. When they're calling their friends up and they're inviting their friends over and they're pulling the drawers out and they're showing them the custom joints that we made for them and saying, they made these custom joints for me, for my drawers. And they, and these, I'm the only customer in the world that has these joints and they'll never repeat this exact joint. Again, this is my joint. And and the guy is saying, yeah, it took five guys to carry that up the stairs, you know? And when, because that's, that's what they were getting. They were getting a story, you know? Uh, modern furniture doesn't take five guys to carry it up the stairs. So you know what we did in all future pieces of furniture? 
we put more, more material in it. We wanted it to take six guys to carry it up the stairs. <laughs> oh, that's great. Not, not as a gimmick, but it, but knowing that they valued the fact that it took a lot of effort, then we could reinforce our furniture in ways that it was never going to fail. It was never going to come apart. So we could afford to put extra material in. We're saying, hey, if they value the fact that it took five guys to carry it up the stairs, you know, let's put more material in it. Let's make it stronger. Let's make it heavier duty. Because if it takes six guys, that's, that's something that they love. So, yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> I love it. Let's translate this language of abundance flows to value into what we're doing here at Ascending Harvest. Because we bring value to the world in a lot of different ways. I can think of at least three different categories of people that we serve. You know, on the end, at the end of the game, it's the families in, and the children and the men and the women in refugee camps and in, in developing countries who get one of these human-powered hydroponic service systems and have an opportunity to grow their own food. You know, our primary mantra is, at last, anyone, anywhere can grow their own food. So the value that we give to them is a value of empowerment, and a value of nutrition, a value of better cognition because they're thinking better, because they're better, they're, they're better fed, et cetera. So that kind of value is very obvious. In the middle of that, we have aid organizations, whether they be governmental aid organizations or NGOs, you know, trusts and charities, et cetera, who want to help those people, and we're giving them the opportunity, giving them the extreme value of being able to serve their mission better than they could before without one of these systems. So I love that. And to people who are listening to this Zoom cast and who want to contribute a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, sixteen hundred dollars, a hundred and sixty thousand dollars, we give you the opportunity and knowing that you are part of a winning team, knowing that you were part of the community that delivered this extreme value to those people who need it the most. You know, and we are trusting that abundance will flow to you whenever you provide that value to us, and we're trusting that abundance will flow to us because of the value that we're bringing those three different communities. So I, I really like what you said, and I want to I want to um, dovetail on part of that. Speaking of joints, um, so you talk about you tr we trust that the value is going to come back to the giver. Well, let me let me express how that value is going to come back to the giver because we're already planning this. One of our amazing sponsors, and I can't speak highly enough of these people, is My Mini Casa. Aaron Peterson, the owner of My Mini Casa, has been one of our biggest fans. He's, he's helped to arrange one of our matching donors. They're, they're giving a percentage of sales on certain days to our project. Like today, they're giving 1% of their sales um, as a donation to our project. They, they encouraged their, all of their agents to share uh, materials from our campaign, and he's basically giving his agents credits that they get paid for. He's basically, it's the same as him giving them $10 to share our campaign today. So there's tremendous value being created there. One of the things that we're already in the planning stages with My Mini Casa is that they're going to ship our systems to Africa, and we're going to be working in these communities and lifting them up, and as they produce things, local craft goods, those can go into containers and come back. And so the enterprise, the global enterprise, will expand on our efforts, and the give back, is that there's more of the world engaged in the global economy in a healthy way that rather than consuming resources is creating uh, resources that can be shared back and forth around the world. And so there's going to be things that are going to come out of these communities that are going to have, um, that are going to give you a story to tell. 
that maybe there's a certain food that ends up coming out of these communities that ends up on our in our herbal remedies or in our food supply that helps your health that maybe helps you to fend off that uh, that systemic illness that we have in in our culture there's all kinds of value that could come out of this that we don't even know yet um, you know cures who is the doctor that's going to get the nutrition from the system that you donated that's going to to solve a new way to treat malaria and save millions of people. If they don't get that nutrition, they will never come into existence to create that cure. But your donation, imagine your dollar provides that 8.75 pounds of food that our systems can create from a single dollar. Imagine that that nutrition feeds that future mind that solves a problem a systemic world problem because you donated. So the give back, it's hard to quantify, but there's certainly going to be give back. And um, the, the challenge is just tying how that give back comes about. But we all know that as the world develops, um, health increases, cognition increases, creativity increases, art creates, increases, culture increases, all these increases come about, improvements in the developing world. We just need to get more of the world developed so that more of that can spill out. I love that. And I hope that each and every one of you has the opportunity to tell your children and your grandchildren that, hey, I contributed to Ascending Harvest when they were just getting started. I gave them my buck, my five bucks, my ten bucks. I contributed forty dollars to them when they were just getting started. And then later on, I purchased my own human-powered hydroponic system. Or I, or I won one in a prize drawing that, that they shared you know, at the end of one of these Zoom casts. We want to give you that story. We want to give you that opportunity to tell that story and your kids and your grandkids to tell that story too, how you were one of the, the early contributors to solving this terrible problem that we have now of world hunger, which reduced the stress levels of the entire planet which increases you know, the peace and the connectivity of all peoples. That's where our vision is, and that's what we want to see. Um, I would like to share some things that I wrote down that are <clears throat> our value side and the, and the direct abundance that will flow from, that, from those values. Awesome. So I'm going to look away from the camera for a minute here, but on the value side, I've got our system requires no experience. Um, it grows five times more per dollar. Um, so, so whatever dollar you put in, it grows five times the amount of food that that dollar could purchase in that economy. Um, it uses 95% water, or 95% less water. Um, no electricity or fuel needed. It lasts for many years. So those are values. Those, those are things that are values of the system. Here's some of the abundance that flows from that value or flows to that value. Empowerment, self-sufficiency, increased nutrition, increased cognitive ability, micro enterprise opportunities, decreased illness, more vibrant communities. So the, the secret and this is why abundance flows to value is my mantra, is the secret to creating abundance is to figure out how to create the most value. And there's been many years spent on, on the opposite of the most expensive furniture. Now I'm doing the exact extreme opposite into that pendulum swing is how do we take the maximum advantage of materials and leverage it to producing food. So everything in the design, everything in the manufacturing, everything in our business model is how do we leverage the least amount of energy and the least amount of materials to get the highest impact of nutrition and the highest production of food. And that's what our system is, is, is pushing those values as far to the extreme as we can 
and still get, the, so that we get maximum abundance for the amount of energy and materials that go into the manufacturing, the distribution, and the use of these systems. So that's what we're about, is maximizing the value so that we also maximize the abundance that has to flow to that value. That's awesome, Shane. I love that. You know, you may want to listen to this recording again so you can focus on how that phrase, how that mantra, abundance flows to value, applies to your life today and how you can apply it even further by really understanding the value that you bring to your friends, to your family, to the people that you work with, to the customers that you serve, and really focusing on that value and getting them to focus and recognize that value as well so that you know, everybody can live in a state of higher abundance. That's what, that's what we really want for, you know, for the entire world, for you and for everybody else. Cool discussion today, Shane. I love it. What's what? that? What? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I just said it's cool discussion today, Shane. Oh, yeah, thank you. I, this is one of my favorite topics because it's brought so much to my life. And, and the way that you can apply this in your life and the reason why I use it as a mantra is it's something that I repeat to myself throughout the day because what I want to do is I want to look at what I'm doing. Are the projects I'm working on creating value? Are the specific tasks that I'm doing creating value? And, and it doesn't matter what area of life. This is a truism. Abundance flows to value is true no matter what you talk about. If you want a more abundant relationship, how can you create more value in the relationship? If you want a higher spiritual self, how do you create more spiritual value? How do you create more relationship value? How do you create more health value, more educational value? When you're conducting your life, you can simply ask this question, is binge watching Netflix creating a value for me? <laughs> if it is, then great. But maybe there's something else that you could be doing. You could watch a couple of episodes and then you could switch to, okay, now I'm going to do something that creates value in my relationships. So it helps keep you on track to keep abundance flowing into you and into your family, into your community, into the world. And you can actually ask that question, is what I'm doing creating more abundance in the world? Is what I'm doing healing the planet? How can I bring more abundance to healing the planet? It doesn't matter what the problem is. It doesn't matter what the problem is. The solution is, is to create value that draws abundance to the solution. And so you can do, you can apply this to your life throughout the day, all day long, and it will put you in a better place and in more abundant living. I love it. It's a great encouragement. Let's see if we can't bring a little value to somebody who either contributed to the campaign or went to our website at ascendingharvest.com and signed up for our email list because all of you folks are entered into our prize drawing for a human-powered hydroponic system that we give away at the end of every one of these Zoom casts. Shane, give me a number between one and 10,000, buddy, and let's, let's find another winner. All right. Oh, the number is 68. I think that's the lowest number we've ever had. That's you know, it's gonna be pretty easy to figure out who that one is, because it's the, it is, it is the very first person on our list and it is Jill Lublin. Jill Lublin is a, is a sponsor and a friend of our project. She is a marvelous author, a great speaker, and a good friend of mine, too. I've worked with Jill, known Jill for, gosh, 14 years now. And um, I have a great deal of respect for what she, do, what she does. She's a best-selling author of a couple of different titles, Guerrilla Marketing, Guerrilla Networking, or a couple of Guerrilla Networking is one of them. Guerrilla Marketing was somebody else. But she is a fantastic author, a great speaker, and a good friend of this project, and an absolute expert when it comes to networking and public relations. So congratulations, Jill. You're the winner of a human-powered hydroponic system today. We will give one to you uh, when they come out of mass manufacturing, now expected at the end of Q1 2019, or you can donate it to a family in need in your name. So congratulations. If you'd like to have the opportunity to win one, please go to ascendingharvest.com and either 
give us your email address right then or click on that green button to donate a dollar or more to our crowdfunding campaign and we'll enter you into the prize drawings in all future days as well. So congratulations, Jill. Thanks, Shane. I really appreciate you sharing the insight of abundance flows to value and bringing our attention to the value that we're bringing to others and the value that we're bringing to the world, to the value that we're bringing to future generations of people, to our children and our grandchildren and their great-grandchildren as well. I really do appreciate that. This has been a meaningful episode to me. Well, thank you, Paul. And I just want to share with one of the values that our listeners, our viewers create when they contribute to our campaign is you are creating the value of a hand up and that significantly reduces the need for a handout. And so if you've grown weary or frustrated of the continuous need to donate to a handout charity, let's focus on those opportunities that are hand ups, like Ascending Harvest. And so please consider giving to Ascending Harvest because we are a hand up solution and we can uh, reduce and maybe at some point even eliminate handout charity. I love that. Thanks, Shane. Thank thanks you. to all. Yeah, thanks to all of you for listening to our recording or joining us live. We do appreciate it. Send us an email. Give us a call. Let us know what questions or what topics you'd like for us to address on future Zoomcasts, and we'll uh, we'll get back to you whenever we do the next one, which will be tomorrow. So until we join <laughs> you tomorrow, <laughs> have an awesome, fantastic day. Contribute uh, to our campaign and share with your social media network. We really would appreciate it. I'll let you take us out, Shane. Thank you, everybody. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.